Let's say I did decide to become your girlfriend. What about Momo? What do you mean, what about her? Who gives a shit? I do, because she's my friend, goddammit. And you're her boyfriend, for crying out loud. How do you explain this to her? You'd have to break up. So what? I don't care. She'll get over it. Are you serious? I told you, I only love you. If I can have you, I don't need my marker anymore. So you're gonna throw her away? Like a piece of garbage? If you want to put it like that? The only reason I wanted her to be my girlfriend in the first place is because she's popular as fuck and everyone wants her. I never truly felt anything for her, but with you it's different. Yeah, go fuck yourself. I'm serious. I guess at least in that regard, I'm truly thankful to Momoko. Through her I get to learn more about you. The three of us spent a lot of time together over these past two weeks, and I've realised that you're literally everything I've always been looking for at a girl. I swear to god this is the first time in my life I actually truly fell in love. Please believe me, Carmen. I love you. I need you. Can you believe that? Can you believe he actually said those things? He didn't care about Momo at all. To him she was just like a new phone model or something. An object to brag about while it was still new and interesting before throwing it away and replacing it with something else. I was so angry at him. I had no idea if he was actually serious about me or not, but I didn't care either. I told him to stop and tell Momo the truth, but he wouldn't. He just wouldn't give up. He brought me presents, spammed my phone with love messages, and just kept going. No matter what I said. I mean, it was kind of like Kotokun. I guess. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But if you knew all that, why didn't you tell Momoka? Or did you? Of course I did. I tried to warn her, but... She flipped? I don't believe you. You're just jealous, aren't you? What? No. That's not true. Don't lie to me. I know you and Hiro talk a lot when I'm not around. Masaki told me that she even saw you two in the park the other day, and a few times after school. Well, that's because he keeps... I didn't want to hear it. Oh, you want him for yourself, don't you? That's nonsense. Seriously, I don't care about him. Well, if that's the case, you shouldn't have any problem with us being together. But I do. I told you, he's using you. He doesn't love you at all. He just wants... Stop it. I don't care what you think about him. This is my decision. If I want to be together with him, you have to accept that. I love him, got it? So keep your hands off him. I really don't want it to come to this, but if you don't, we're done, okay? What? I couldn't believe it. After that argument, I didn't touch the subject again. I didn't want our friendship to suffer from it. Dang, she must have really loved that guy if she was willing to go that far, huh? Maybe. Or maybe she's just deluding herself like Runa. Either way, I can't really blame her for her reaction. What do you mean? Momo never really had that much luck when it came to trusting others. As I said before, she was way too nice. She never wanted to upset anyone. And some people exploited that weakness. People pretended to be her friend. She got betrayed again and again in the past, and so she began to distance herself from others. After getting stabbed in the back so many times, it naturally became difficult for her to trust anyone. Which is also why she got so easily jealous. The smaller signs of, what ha of it happening again scared her. I see. It took a long time until she even told me all those things. I had to be very patient and work really hard before she opened up her heart to me. Only earlier this year, after almost two years of knowing each other, she finally told me that I was the person she ever fully trusted. And that I'd helped her gain more confidence. So that she was willing to give others a chance again as well. You have no idea how incredibly happy that made me. I promised her I'd always support her and never betray her. She said she believed me, but in the end I guess that wasn't true. When the whole dilemma with Hero started, she seemed to become scared, and no matter what I said, she couldn't help but get suspicious of me. The day I told her about Ryan Runa's Halloween prank, we went to dinner to have dinner together at a restaurant. At some point I needed to use the bathroom, and I left my cell phone lying on the table. When I came back, I, I thought his position had changed. For the rest of the day, Momo kept acting rather odd. I couldn't be sure, of course, but I was afraid that she might have checked my messages. Stupid as I was, I still hadn't deleted all of Hero's. Some of his love declarations, others with questionable things that he would have loved to do with me, and yet some more in which he stated his true thoughts about Momo. They were all still there. I couldn't ask her about it, of course, but I got scared. What if she'd read them? She didn't say anything about it the following day, or the day after that. So I was hoping I was just driving myself crazy over nothing, but... She had. She'd read everything, and she felt betrayed by her boyfriend as well as the person she thought to be her best friend. So that's why Momo had gone this far. 
why she wanted to end her life and get revenge on the people so close to her. The guy she loved had treated her like trash and the only person she'd ever thought she could fully trust had betrayed her. Kao must have been to Momoka what Barachan was to me. I had no idea how I'd have reacted if I'd found out that Barachan had betrayed me in such a way. But Carmen didn't betray her. Since she never had many friends, Momoka must have been extremely attached to the few people close to her. Similar to me. So learning all these things must have been quite the shock. A fragile mental state, weakened over time by conscious, continuous betrayal, might have been easily shattered by all of this. Throwing her into despair and breaking her to the point where she entirely snapped. If only she'd listened to me. If only she'd believed me. Maybe none of this would have happened. Then again, how could I expect her to believe me when I never told her the truth to begin with? The truth? What do you mean? I thought you told her the truth. The truth about my feelings. Huh? You see, I'm... I'm not even interested in guys. Wait, what are you saying? I actually loved her. I loved Momo. Once those words escaped Carmen's lips, we were left speechless. For a moment, it seemed as though she regretted telling us this. She looked away and didn't dare meet her eyes. However, that initial embarrassment quickly changed into another wave of sadness and anger. She clenched her fist and forcefully hammered it into the table. You see? If anyone had any reason to be driven mad by jealousy, it was me. I fell in love with her the moment I first met her. I just never managed to tell her about my feelings because I was afraid it could ruin our friendship. I mean, I knew she wasn't interested in girls, so what else was I supposed to do? It took some time, but I kind of managed to get over it and simply see her as a friend. However, when she got together with Hero, it was still painful. So I guess she was kind of right. I was jealous. I did try to get between them. Not to be together with Hero, though. I merely wanted to protect her. But my efforts backfired. She got the entirely wrong idea. If only I told her the truth about my feelings, then maybe... It's ironic, isn't it? So much that it's funny, actually. <laughs> Her sudden breakout of laughter didn't last long. It quickly evolved into desperate crying and screaming as she threw herself against my chest once more. Why was it always some stupid misunderstanding that led to such tragedies? My throat is killing me. Are we done? <laughs> This has been an hour long, even though I cut it in half. I am a very sorry for the length of this episode. I may have to cut it again. Even though it had only started a couple of moments ago, the sudden downpour was already starting to subside. As it gradually grew weaker, turning into a faint drizzle, I lowered my umbrella and looked up at the grey, cloud-covered sky. A few rebellious rays of sunlight had managed to pierce through the thick barricade of depression, tearing a big bright hole into it. As the rain slowly dissolved completely, I further tilted my head back, closed my eyes and let the sunlight spill across my face. The temperatures were quite low. It was a rather cold November day, therefore I was welcomed the sun's warm touch and tried to enjoy it as much as possible before it was gobbled up by the melancholic wall of grey rain. Once the warmth was gone, and all I felt stroking across my cheeks was the cold touch of the autumn breeze. I let out a deep sigh, closed my umbrella and lowered my gaze. She was still there, of course, right in front of me, wet from top to bottom. Oh dear, you're completely drenched now. I should have let you under my umbrella, but I guess I'm a little absent-minded today. Sorry about that. Feeling a little guilty, I reached into my pocket for a handkerchief, crouched down in front of her and carefully wiped the raindrops off my sister's face. She kept listening patiently as I continued from where I left off, before the sudden rainfall had interrupted me. A sad story, isn't it? And all of it happens because of a simple misunderstanding. I told her everything, the whole story of what happened to that Halloween night. The events from almost two weeks ago still seemed so surreal, too surreal to have actually occurred. Unfortunately, every single day we were brutally reminded that they had. It was so weird, seeing those three empty seats in our classroom. Momoka, Hiro, and Kataiba. Since that fateful night, everything was so different. The whole atmosphere at school had drastically changed. Everything was so eerily quiet now. No Kataiba yelling, telling perverted stories and fighting with Mika. No gossiping or teasing between Carmen and Momoka. And no Hiro wandering around boasting about his recent achievements. I hadn't noticed before, but all three had been an integral part of my daily school life. And now they were gone. 
It just wasn't the same anymore. To think that all this was a result of a mere misunderstanding. If Amoka had really seen those messages on Carmen's phone, one couldn't blame her for the conclusion she'd reached. Still, maybe it wouldn't have come to all this if only she had told, talked to Carmen about it and given her a chance to explain herself. But alas, she hadn't. And even if she had, it might not have changed much. I mean, it hadn't worked the first time either when Carmen had tried to talk to her. And unfortunately, that's how it usually goes, isn't it? Why should I listen to your bullshit? I know you're lying. I didn't even want to hear any of your excuses. I know what I saw, so don't even try to talk yourself out of it. Let you finish? I've already heard enough. There's nothing more to talk about. I'm so sick of hearing expressions like these. Momoku had apparently yelled them at her best friend. And even Taiko had used similar ones when accusing Carmen of being the culprit. And every single day, so many other people resort to them as well. It's quite depressing, isn't it? Misunderstandings are so easy to produce by a lack of communication and the mere unwillingness to listen and think. But why gather all available information first in order to make a proper judgement when jumping to conclusions is so much simpler and requires a lot less effort, right? It's funny how everyone always wants to be given a chance to prove and explain things, explain themselves, yet giving such a chance to others ironically seems to be the hardest thing in the world. Especially if one's emotions are deeply intertwined with the matter at hand, overpowering one's abilities, ability of rational thought. I guess that's just part of human nature. When people get angry, they simply shut off their brains. And in doing so, they tend to make things much worse than necessary, and create drama where otherwise none would exist. Every day so many fights or even tragedies could be prevented, if we wouldn't let our emotional stubbornness get the better of us. If we could just quietly sit down, listen, talk and think. Of course all this is much easier said than done, and not always do things turn out to be a misunderstanding. It's always sad to see whenever a friendship, a relationship, or even an entire life gets destroyed by one. Just like in this case. At least among friends and family, such things shouldn't happen. But I guess that alone was already too much to ask. I once made the very same mistake, remember? Letting a misunderstanding cause such a tragedy? But I swore it'll never let it happen again, not to me, not to anyone else. This time I couldn't prevent another tragedy from happening. But I won't let that discourage me. I'll continue to do my best, just like I promised you. Trust me, Reiko-chan. Your little sister has learned her lesson, and she won't disappoint you again. I let my fingers grind across the inscription on the face of the gravestone. Even though I could neither hear nor see my sister, I knew she was listening. She'd always listen to me. Reiko-chan, I miss you so much. I felt warm tears run across my cheeks as my mind drifted off to those precious times my sister and I had shared together. I could very ima well imagine what Carmen was going through right now. After all, I'd experienced the very same thing, losing someone really important to me. And it had happened for the same reason. Because I had drawn false conclusions and misjudged the situation, which had eventually led, led me to do something really stupid. But it won't allow me to, myself to repeat that mistake ever again. I'll keep working hard so you can be proud of me. And that maybe one day you can forgive me. After wiping the tears from my eyes as well as the last drops of rain from my sister's grave, I put the handkerchief into my pocket and rose back to my feet. Well, I think I've bothered you enough for today, haven't I? And looking at the time, I guess I'd better get going now anyway. You know how mum is. Guess I'll tell you how it went the next time I visit you. It should be real soon, I promise. I folded my hands to pray for my sister's peace one last time before I waved goodbye and finally turned around to take my leave. I would have liked to stay a little longer, but Mum wasn't the only one waiting for me. Barachan was too. And knowing how much she hated these kinds of places, I didn't want to make her wait any longer than necessary. So without further ado, I moved back to the graveyard's entrance. Once I passed through the main gates, I immediately spotted her on the other side, leaning against the wall. The moment her eyes met, a huge grin flashed across her lips. Yo, Raikachan. Hey there. Sorry it took so long. It's cool, no worries. Killed some time by trying to catch a smu smuggle stuff? Male, level 64. I actually got it, but I had to keep reloading because it always broke free from my alpha ball. In the end, I had to use my only beta ball. Can you believe it? Son of a bitch. So she's been gaming all this time, huh? Figures. Why would I been worried about her? So, like, did you say hi to Ghosty for me? I couldn't help but snigger upon hearing that name. 
Ghosty was obviously referring to my sister, not because she'd passed on. Barashan had always called her that. Since her childhood, Reiko had been fascinated by ghosts, curses, and supernatural in general. She'd read and watched everything related to those things and really loved to tell us ghost stories his daughter to scare us. That's where her nickname originated from. Come to think of it, I guess my sister was the reason why Barachan was so superstitious and allergic to ghosts in the first place. Reiko's stories had probably scarred her for life. Don't worry, I gave her your regards. But I'm sure she would have been happier to see you. You should have come along. Nah. You know, graveyards and I ain't exactly compatible, huh? <laughs> Too many ghosts and stuff. There aren't any ghosts around a graveyard because ghosts do not exist. When will you ever believe me? Well, if they ain't existing. Then why are you coming here to talk to ghosts, dear? Well, that's, uh... I guess you got me there. If you put it like that, I did want to believe in the existence of ghosts. However, this is a little different. While I did want to believe my sister could somehow still hear me, of course I knew that there was no way a ghost could, was actually roaming this place. Just like I knew that vengeful spirits possessing people were also nothing more than complete balderdash. Either way, I'll only believe ghosts ain't existing once I see them not existing with my own eyes. But you can't see what's not existing anyway, so... Oh well, whatever. Let's just get going. Yeah, we should not disturb the dead for too long. And so we headed for the park, towards something truly scary that truly existed, unlike ghosts in a graveyard. Raiko Shimpuku. Age 14. Literature, like anime, cats, ghost stories, reading video games, just like homework and studying. Hmm. What happened to her? What was this misjudgment she did that caused her to die? I need to know. When we reached the park, Barachan and I followed the path to the shopping district at a leisurely pace. Since it was already noon, we probably should have stepped it up a notch. However, I couldn't really bring myself to. Mum was waiting for us after all. The hair salon where she was working was pretty close by, therefore we wanted to head there, over there after visiting Raikachan, so we could go shopping during her lunch break. I personally thought there was no need for that, but according to her, I badly needed a new pair of shoes and a fashionable winter jacket. I really wasn't looking forward to this. Shopping with mum was already a t always a test of patience, and usually ended in utter embarrassment for me. Originally, I'd refused to submit myself to this torture, but like always, she'd been so incredibly annoying and persistent that I'd eventually just given in, just to shut her up. And now here I was, deciding the moment we would arrive at our des dreading the moment we'd arrive at our destination. Curses, she's already bombarded my cell phone with a bazillion messages asking where the heck we are. Should we hurry up a little? Nah. After seeing these messages, I kind of feel like walking the even slower pace. Come on, don't be like that. It'll be fun. You're only saying that because you never actually went shopping with her before. Did you never listen to all those horror stories I told you? Well, you always tend to exaggerate a little, so... I don't? Well, let's see your reaction once you've got a taste of pure despair. There you go again. Anyway, I need to get some new stuff for myself. Yeah, I'd rather go with you. The alternative would be going with Dad and... No. Just no. Fair enough. Shopping with Mum was bad, but it was probably still better than going with Mr. Akidori. Then again, this is kind of like deciding between getting your entire finger chopped off or just your nail ripped out. Anyway, brighten up a little. Maybe we'll find you a pair of cute animals. You seem to have taken quite a liking to those, haven't you? Just can't take them off, huh? What? What was she talking about? Wait, I've been wearing those accursed cat ears again, was I? I was! I could feel them on my head. Curses, when am I- <laughs> Yes, just make fun of me. Huh? I ain't. I was just thinking it was kind of cool that you can run around like that without feeling embarrassed at all. Because I totally would, even though I really like him too. Curses, I was just about to take them off, but now I couldn't. Not unless I wanted to know that I was embarrassed to wear these blasted things. It's totally unlike you, but maybe that's a good thing. A sign that you might be starting to revert back to your old self, huh? My old self, huh? It's kind of hard to imagine going back to that. In fact, I even wish that back then I'd already been the way I was now. If I had, then Raikachan would still be here after all. I'm also still surprised whenever I think back to that Halloween night and how you stood up for Carmen. That was totally unlike you as well. You even seem to have fun trying to figure out the truth and solving all the mysteries. 
I mean, you should wear cocky and unusually talkative. <laughs> this detective stuff might just be your thing. Maybe you should think about becoming one. Become a detective and solve more crimes, as well as potential murders. Yeah, no. I could definitely pass on that. Although I had to admit it had been strangely exciting. I still couldn't really believe it myself. I think I talked a lot more than the others that night than I had over the course of the entire school year. However, it had been necessary in order to reveal the truth. And I would certainly do it again if needed. Too bad our other classmates hadn't been there. They probably think a lot of different about you now, just like Calvin does. Who cares what they think about me anyway? I'm glad if they keep leaving me alone to be honest. Well, can't really blame you. And one time you decide to finally join them for something fun that turns out like this. On that note, though, have you already heard about Rai? What about her? She's already at it again. Since her Halloween party didn't turn out as planned, she's preparing another one for Christmas. She's already thinking of throwing another party after what just happened? Seriously? That girl, well I guess everyone had their own ways of coping with things. And some did so by creating distractions to keep themselves busy and their minds occupied. Still, I sure had enough of these parties for a while, so hopefully she wasn't planning on inviting Barachan and me again. I'm just glad she's back to her usual self. Since it didn't work out last time, she apparently got another idea on how to ensnare poor old Taiko as well. Of course, kinda surprised she didn't already try anything. I think she's going on easy on him for now. Poor guy's got a lot of stuff on his mind after all. That was certainly true. Kataiba's funeral had taken place two days ago. Everyone had been there. Our teachers, our classmates, even I. I never really liked the guy and there was no justification for what he'd done. However, even if he'd stalked, Mom stalked Momoko, effectively scaring her, he certainly hadn't deserved this. Punishment? Yes. But dying in such a cruel way? I could only hope he was able to rest in peace. Especially for Taiko's sake. Ever since that night, he wasn't his usual self anymore. He was trying hard to get over the loss of his best friend and keep going forward, but it naturally wasn't easy. I knew that all too well myself. He wasn't the kind of guy to give up, though. I knew that he'd come around. He just needed some more time. Anyway, I'm curious to see what Rai's cooking up this time. Rena's going to be helping him with the preparations again. I actually talked to her on her way home yesterday. She seems to be doing, a, doing fine for herself from what I can tell. Guess she really is over here right now. It really didn't surprise me that much. I know one shouldn't talk bad about the dead, but that guy sure had, to be, had been a scumbag. I couldn't help but wonder why he'd been like that. How he could have treated Momoko and Runa in such a horrible way. Unfortunately, this is something I'd probably never get an answer to. But like I do now is speculate. Then again, I honestly didn't really care for his reasons. Whatever they might have been, they wouldn't have justified what any of what he'd done anyway. I was just glad to know that Runa was doing well. That was really all that mattered to me. You know... Not only is she doing fine, she actually told me something really interesting. Apparently, she had her eyes set on someone else for a while now. The guy's name's Katsuo. He's attending another school. She met him a month ago when she was watching her bro's soccer team play against theirs. Who would have thought, huh? Interesting. You said me when Runa was so vehemently insisting on being over her feelings for Hero, she'd actually told us the truth. Nevertheless, it might have been still quite hard for her to accept that she'd been nothing more than a throwaway toy to him. Just like Momoko. You seem well informed, don't you? Well, I was just worried about the others and I wanted to see if they were all doing fine. Even if it meant squeezing some of the info out of them. Did I even want to know what she'd done to get Brenda to tell her about her love life? So like, since we're already talking about everyone... <coughs> have you heard anything about Carmen? For a second I was surprised myself to have actually asked this. It was still kind of weird. Carmen had always been one of the people I disliked the most, but now? She's probably the one I was worried about the most. The first few days after the party, she'd skipped school. And when she finally returned to the classroom, she looked quite depressed, which was only understandable. I wanted to talk to her, but so far I hadn't been able to build up the courage to do so. I wasn't quite sure how to go about it either. I mean, what was I supposed to say? Oh, I just wasn't good at this human interaction stuff. Haha. <laughs> hmm? What's so funny now? Oh, nothing, nothing. Come on, tell me. No, really. There ain't nothing to tell you. Nothing at all. <laughs> Could you please act even more suspicious? Well, I guess you'll find out in just a sec anyway. What the? 
I suddenly felt a heavy weight dragging me to my knees. Someone had jumped at me from behind. Their arms were slinging themselves around my neck, just as their legs did around my hips, and they firmly attached themselves to my back. As I fought hard not to topple over, I felt the warm breath of my assailant in my left ear, shortly before a loud explosion of sound erupted inside of it. God almighty. Aku! Curses. Their weight was too much for my frail body to handle. I desperately tried ke keeping my legs from caving in, but they weren't going to endure it much longer. Thankfully, though, the little devil seemed to realise that herself. Before I could collapse and get buried beneath her, she finally left, let go. Holy crap! Mika, are you insane? Hakukuku. Mika did it! Mika was victorious! What? Mika totally shocked Raiko. Mika saw the terror written all over Raiko's face. And how exactly she'd been able to see anything written on my face when she jumped at me from behind? Raiko's getting a wet down there, isn't she? What? While saying that, she pointed her sparkling baseball bat at my crutch, a triumphant smile gleaming across her lips. Just admit it, Riker's panties are totally drenched because she peed herself in fear. No, I didn't. Prove it. No, I won't. Then Mika is one. This little devil. I was just about to give her a piece of my mind when I suddenly noticed someone timidly standing a little off in the distance. Carmen. She seemed rather nervous and barely managed to even look at us. However, after closing her eyes for a moment and taking a deep breath, she raised her head and finally managed to greet us. Hi there, Nabara and uh, Raikachan. Yo, Kama, what's up? Hello there. What a coincidence running into you here. Yeah, I wouldn't call it that much of a coincidence. So that's what Barachan had been snickering about a moment ago. As it turned out, Mika had sent her a text message in order to arrange a little meetup while I'd been visiting Raikachan. Since Kama and Mika had done some shopping there them, here themselves, they've been close by. Therefore Barachan had told them to meet us at the park. I see. So then you wanted to talk to me? Yes, but I need if it's okay with you. I heard you already have plans, so if you're in a hurry or something, I guess I can wait. No, it's okay. I don't mind, really. Considering this meant that I could delay my shopping trip with Mum a little longer, I'd gladly stay here and talk with her. Besides, maybe this is exactly the chance I've been looking for. Thanks. She looked quite happy about my answer, but at the same time still incredibly nervous. Her gaze wandered all over the place, every now and then glancing back at me before quickly moving somewhere else again. What exactly was going on here? What was she so nervous about? She's got the hots for you, man. Let me cut straight to the chase. I wanted to thank you again, you know, for helping me back there, for believing in me and standing up for me. There's no need for that. I only did what I thought was right. You were telling the truth, after all. But you were the only one who believed me. I didn't want to think about how things might have turned out if it hadn't been for you. I'm so very grateful for what you did for me. Even though I didn't deserve it. Huh? I was a little unsure what you meant by that. But before I got time to even ponder it. Please forgive me. Forgive you for what? For the way I've treated you all this time. To think that you would be there for me. After everything I've done and said to you. I'm so ashamed of myself. And I'm truly sorry about it. I really got the wrong idea about you. Carmen. You're always so serious, barely laugh or smile and avoid most people. Excuse me for putting it like this, but I always took you for an unsociable idiot who hated everyone else. That's why I treated you like that. Because I got the impression that you're the, the kind of person who thinks too highly of yourself. That you saw the rest of us as fools or something, who weren't even worth your time. Well, even though I didn't do it with that intention in mind, I guess I couldn't deny that it was possible to interpret my behaviour that way. As a child, I'd been different. I mean, even back then, I'd been quite an introvert, mostly sticking to my sister and Barachan, rather than seeking friends outside of our little circle. But I'd certainly been more fun-loving and cheerful, a bit more like Momoko, I guess. After Raikachan had passed away, however, I'd completely shut myself off, delving deep into a period of isolation, one from which I emerged as a rather different person. Not only had I come to profess dicking to the people already close to me more than ever, I'd also become more serious, grumpy and gloomy as Carmen liked to call it. It didn't mean I hated everyone around me though. If anything, I hated myself for having been so carefree, foolish and somewhat reckless in the past. I thought you only cared about yourself and maybe those you deemed special enough to spend your time with. Like Nabara. And it kind of pissed me off. But I see now that I was wrong. I should have figured it out much sooner. In the end, you're really not that different from Momo. So once again, I'm truly sorry for how I treated you. And I hope that you can forgive me. It's fine. 
Don't worry about it. She looked a little surprised by my answer. Almost as though she hadn't expected it to be that easy. However, how could I have replied to anything else to her? Just in the look in her eyes alone, I could tell that she hadn't merely said those things out of a feeling of obligation. Because she thought she had to, after I helped her. No, she genuinely meant every single word of it. She really was sorry, and she really did seem to regret how she treated me. And in the end, I couldn't really hold it against her. Up until now, I had always thought, why did Carmen treat me like this? Why did she always have to pick on me? Make snide remarks at me? How could she criticise me for my behaviour if she didn't know anything about me? But I never made an effort to understand her either, so I guess it only made sense. Just like I had no obligation to treat everyone the way they wanted me to, I couldn't expect anyone to peek inside my head and try to understand me. So if I really appeared that unfriendly and unsociable, did I have the right to complain about others acting hostile towards me? Are you really sure about this? Forgiving me just like that? Of course I am. It's fine, really. I can see why you thought that way about me. It's mostly my own fault. Besides, I have to admit that I never thought the nicest things about you either, so... I'm sorry too. Raikachan. Anyway, it's all in the past now, right? So let's just forget about this and simply start anew. The past. So there's something I've been meaning to ask you for a long time now. Do you... Do you by any chance remember... Yeah? Never mind. Forget I said anything. I do want to ask you something else though. If you... If you really mean what you just said, then I... I, uh... Her level of nervousness seemed to gain a drastic boost again. Entire moments passed without her saying anything as she tried to build up the courage to spit out whatever was on her mind. Then when her eyes eventually met again, I noticed a sudden surge of determination in hers as she took a deep breath and... I want to know everything about you. What? I mean, so that I can understand you better. Of course, I know that I'd, it'd take some time for you to feel comfortable enough to tell me anything, but I don't mind waiting. It wouldn't be the first time either. No matter how long it takes, I want to earn your trust so that maybe one day you won't mind telling me. Carmen. I just want to learn more about you. I want to know why you are the way you are. This probably sounds super weird and it's kind of embarrassing, but, well, what I'm trying to say is, um, please let's become friends. <clears throat> the moment she finished, her face immediately exploded into a fiery glow of red. I was utterly speechless, to say the least. As were Mika and Barachan. Carmen. Two weeks ago, I would never have imagined her asking to be friends, not even in my wildest dreams. Yet here she was, standing right in front of me, nervously fidgeting as she awaited my reply. She was really serious about this, but what was I going to tell her? Even if I wanted to, I couldn't just say no, but this is all so sudden. Of course. Let's be friends then. Really? Yes, really. We can at least try, I guess. I honestly wasn't too sure about this. For so long, I tried to avoid something like this. However, after she'd apologised with such sincerity and fought so hard to muster the courage to even ask that question, I would have felt really bad for her giving her any other reply than a yes. Besides, being friends is a lot better than being enemies, right? Thank you, Raikachan. She looked incredibly happy, as though a huge load had been taken off her shoulders. I could even see some tears of joy welling up in the corner of her eyes. <laughs> it's about time this happened. But don't you forget, if you and Raikachan become friends, we got to be friends too. Of course, I certainly wouldn't mind. Aku, Mika says that that went really well, didn't it? But isn't Carmen still forgetting something, Aku? I am. Aku, Carmen had something to give Raikou, didn't she? Well... Another wave of nervousness washed over Carmen's face as she glanced down at the shopping bag she was holding in her hands. I recognised it right away. It was from a nearby anime and manga store that Barachan and I frequented. For a few moments, she seemed indecisive about what to do, almost like she was fighting an internal inner struggle. Eventually, however, she reached into her bag and took something out. I know it isn't much or anything special, but I thought maybe you'd like it. She held a tiny cube-like cardboard box out to me. There was a colourful anime motif printed on it, and it seemed it was a little boy in a blue jacket with a red bow tie and rather huge glasses. Apparently there was a small figure of him inside of it. I actually knew this anime character rather well. With a smile flashing across my lips, I accepted the box and thanked her for it. Hey, that's Arthur the Detective Kid. Oh man, I love that show. Are you watching it too, Carmen? Well, yeah. Kinda. A little. I mean, I just started watching. Mika said it was good, so we watched it together and finished the second season last night. The second season already? 
Although even more surprising than that. I can remember how Carmen was always complaining about Mika, especially due to her childish behaviour. Now the two of them were having anime nights together? I guess there hadn't been any need for me to be so worried about her. It looked as though she'd already found what she needed to move on. <laughs> can only recommend it. Show's super awesome, ain't it, Raikachan? It is indeed. It's actually been quite a while since I last seen it, but Raikachan had been a huge fan. She, Barachan, and I had used to watch it together every week. Those have been some really fun times. This figurine will get a very special place on my desk. Thank you very much. N no problem. I'm glad you like it. That little detective boy kind of reminded me of you, so when I saw it, I just had to get it. Actually, I think you'd make a great detective yourself. Maybe you should consider becoming one. I've never really been interested in detective stuff. Arthur had been the only exception. <clears throat> Which had mainly been due to my sister. Apart from that, no. No matter how exciting it had been after that whole Halloween experience, I can say with absolute certainty that a detective was the last thing I ever wanted to be. Anyway, I guess we shouldn't keep you any longer. Aku, Mika and Kama need to raid a few more anime stores anyway. Alright, have fun then. You too. Take care and see you at school, I guess. As Carmen was about to turn around, she suddenly hesitated. One more time, she gathered all her courage to ask one final question. Hey, Raikachan? Yeah? I was wondering, if you don't mind, and feel like it, maybe... Maybe we could watch Arthur together sometime? You mean have an anime night, like you did with with Mika? Yeah. Well, Mika and Nobara can come too, of course. We could all watch together. Aku. Maybe then Mika will finally get a chance to scare Raikachan's panties wet. Sounds fun. Be totally up for it. Now that we talked about it, I really want to rewatch Arthur anyway. What do you think, Raikachan? An anime night with Mika, Carmen, and Barachana? Huh? Frankly, I didn't really feel like it. This is bound to get annoying, at least with Mika around. Besides, after that Halloween party, I wasn't in the mood to do anything with a group of people again anytime soon. Unfortunately, all of them looked rather excited about this idea, and I didn't want to act like a grumpy killjoy again, so. Alright, why not? Yay! It's settled then. We can talk about the details at school on Monday. During lunch, maybe? Sure. Okay. Curses, what did I gotten myself into here? It's just like the start all over again. Oh well. Even if I didn't really look forward to it that much, when I saw my sister put such a... When I saw my answer put such a ginormous smile on Carmen's lips, I was glad that I'd agreed to it. She suddenly seemed to be in high spirits, downright oozing with energy. I don't think I'd ever seen her this cheerful and energetic before. I guess I've been wrong about Carmen too. This is one of those moments again that made me realise just how important it was not to judge a book by its cover. Not to jump to conclusions, but to collect enough information first, before passing judgement on anyone or anything. Only then, did you? Yeah, I knew it. What the heck? What was going on here? Why was Carmen... Was she really... Eh? <laughs> Perplexed, puzzled and petrified, all I could do was stand there as Carmen pressed her lips against my cheek. When she finally hopped back, she gave me an embarrassed smile before suddenly sticking her tongue out, spinning around and hurrying away. Just... Just what the heck was that about? So this is how you truly shock Raiko, Aku. <laughs> Miko, come on, let's go. Aku, see you later, alligators. And off they are. You okay? I guess not. Yeah, certainly didn't see that one coming, huh? Nope. You know, didn't Carmen say she's actually into girls rather than boys? You think she might have a thing for you now? Oh please no. I didn't even want to think about that. All I wanted was for people to leave me alone. Was that really too much to ask? Well well, so you have a girlfriend, huh? Why exactly did you never tell me about that? Oh great. Mum? How long have you been there? Long enough. Of course. She always had the perfect timing. So like, how long you been together? We are not together. She's just my classmate. Yeah, it sure looked like that just now. Come on, don't be so, don't be ashamed. You can admit it. She's quite cute and seems like a nice person. And she's rather well endowed too. <laughs> so that's what you're into, huh? Mum! What? I'm being totally serious here. As your mother, I'll always support you no matter, no matter what. <laughs> your expression is just amazing. Absolutely priceless. Now oh, this accursed woman. Why does she always have to tease me like that? This is exactly why I don't want to go shopping with her. Oh ho ho! Young love sure is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Wait, Dad, you're here too? Hello there, my beautiful little ladies. Glad, glad to see me? No? Oh, come on now, don't be like that, my sugar bear. 
Ah, uh, Dad. Why'd I tell you about calling me that? Especially in public. And what you doing here anyway? I thought you had a meeting with your new publisher. Oh, I had. Right here in the park, actually. It didn't take that long, though. We finished just a couple of minutes ago. When I was about to leave, I ran into the ever so stunning Mrs. Shimpuku here, and I asked if she wanted to come along on uh, your little shopping trip. How could I say no to that? Oh no, Mum. How could you have done this to us? Curses, this couldn't be happening. Speaking of shopping, we should hurry up a little. My lunch break doesn't last forever, you know. I don't mind you, me you meeting your girlfriend, but you could have at least told me. She isn't my girlfriend. I'll send you 52. I sent you 52 messages, and you didn't reply to a single one of them. I was kind of worried, you know. I thought you wouldn't make it in time, so I just came here to pick you up. And guess what I found on the way? I honestly didn't want to know, but before I had the time to take a guess, she had already reached into the shopping bag she'd been hiding this whole time, and slapped its contents into my head in the blink of an eye. Oh my, they're perfect. They look even better than those cat ears you love so much. Indeed, those fox ears suit you extraordinarily well, Raikou-chan. I definitely need to get some for my little Flufflepuff too. Oh hell no. <laughs> That's not even the best part. I also got this. When she reached into that cursed shopping bag again, I couldn't believe it. What was she pulling out now? A big fluffy fox tail? Let's try it out right here. Come on, show mummy your butt. No, forget it. I quickly backed off as she came dangerously close with that atrocious thing. I definitely wasn't going to let her attach that to my butt. Much less in public. Curses, this didn't look good. Shopping with Mum alone would have been hell already, but now Mr. Akaduru is part of it too. Even Barachan didn't look so optimistic anymore. <laughs> I guess we had no other choice. Raikachan? What are we gonna do? The obvious thing. Run. Hey, you two, wait. <laughs> they think they can get away like that, huh? Let's teach them better. Oh, I always was a fast runner. We heard our parents chase after us, but didn't turn around. All I could focus on was what was lying ahead. As fast as we could, Barachan and I ran through the park. To be honest, I don't even want to get into the horrors that happened next, so I guess I'll just end the story right here. Thank you so much for bearing with me until the very end. I'm Raiko Shimpuku. The little fox on the run. And we did it! Whew, that was a long episode, my throat is killing me. I got a, I got a throat lozenge in my mouth right now, you may have noticed. But that was damn near killing me. Great game though. Very cool. I very much like the uh, the deduction stuff. Very cool. I get the feeling that I could have... Um, Katoba could have survived if I'd chosen the right path, but uh, what's done is done. So what else did you get for our anime night with the others? Aku? Mika got this right here. Oh? What kind of movie is that? Mika has no clue, but Mika liked the cover. Looks pretty epic, Aku. Well, let's take a look at the back and see what it's about. Mika! Aku? This... this is hentai. This is a hentai movie. Aku? Mika thought it was some kind of fighting anime. Well, there kinda is some fighting involved. Oh my. Should Mika take it back to the store? No, actually I... wouldn't mind watching it with Raikachan. <laughs> oh my god. How do you get hentai when you're fucking 14? Well, uh, I guess we'll wrap this one up here, although there might be more um, dialogue, I have no idea. But if there is, I'll bring you back, otherwise... <sighs> oh dear, still so much work to do. Just where is Miyamoto-san? She gonna honestly expect me to clean this up all by myself. Oh god. Ah! Ra Runa, I'm gonna eat your brains! Seriously? This is why you were gone for so long? Instead of fooling around so much, how about you lend me a hand for a change? But that's no fun. Keep that in mind for your next party, and don't and don't even decorate the entire... Oh, right, speaking of the next party, I had a really great idea. I know exactly how to make, make Taiko fall for me, and you're going to help me. One condition only. Huh? If you clean up the entire dining hall, I will gladly assist you. What? I think that's only fair, considering I already took care of the reception, kitchen, and restrooms all by myself. You can do some work too, you know. But I don't want to. Well, in that case, I'll be looking forward to seeing your plans fail yet again. Ugh, fine. There's so much to do, though. Isn't there? Have fun. Katoba. 
You sure were the biggest idiot in the world. I swear, if you were here right now, I'd smack the shit out of you for what you'd done to Momoko. Even I can't forgive you for that. Dad said you were the first real friend I ever had. Despite all your flaws, I knew I could count on you when it mattered. And that you'd be there for me when I felt down. I'll never forget how we met. On the first day of elementary school, when those older kids ganged up on me, he came to my aid and tried to protect me. But in the end, both of us got our asses kicked. I guess it's the effort that counts, isn't it? <laughs> we sure have been through a lot, haven't we? It's quite just sad to think that whatever comes next, I'll have to tackle on my own. But I promise you I'll do my best to keep moving on. And that I'll never forget you. Thank you for everything you've done for me, my friend. I'll truly miss you. Curses, where the heck are those two? Don't tell me we've lost them. Looks like it. I certainly don't see them anywhere. But they can't have gotten that far. They've got to be around here somewhere. Yeah, Riker's stamina is even worse than my own, so she shouldn't be able to get away that easily. Wait. She didn't secretly train in preparation for something like this, did she? Oh, ho, ho. well, it's good to see her so energetic, isn't it? I guess that's true. So, I wish she wasn't so energetic now of all times. Why does she always have to make things so much more complicated than they need to be? She knows I won't rest until she's foxified. <laughs> Why does she have to be so stubborn? Like mother, like daughter, I'd say. Anyway, let's split up to cover more ground. She's not getting... Huh? Your cell phone? Yeah, but who would call me now of all... Oh. It's you, you. Yui Chiri... Chirio kun Well, better pick up then. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, I wanted to surprise you two. When I got here, no one was here. So, where are you? Is Raichan with you? Oh, something interesting happened. Like what? W wait, what? Our daughter's in a relationship? What kind of guy is he? I better hope he... Wait, what did you say? A girl? Really? I never would have thought... Well, a girl's better than a guy, right? At least I won't have to worry about her getting pregnant at a young age. You know, like a certain someone. Well, yeah, okay. I guess that was kind of my fault, too. So, is she with you right now? What? What do you mean you've had to catch her? What are you doing to Tui this time? Rechan? What? Hey, Rechan. She she just hung up on me. Poor Raichan's probably going to be in a terrible mood again when she gets home. Maybe a favourite dish will cheer her up, though. My grumpy little darling. A girlfriend, huh? That sure would be nice, but why do I get the feeling that might be not be entirely true? Dang it, I ain't seen him no more. You think we lost him? I sure hope so. <sighs> I can't breathe. You know, we really you really need to do some more sporty stuff. You got less stamina than my grandma. I know. Those ears. They're cute. Who the hell was that? Who was that chick? I have no idea. There you are. See? I found him. They're over here! Oh ho, ho, ho. Shit, they spotted us! Curses, run! Alright, so that's it then. We did it. We, we did the true ending and uh, we are done with Shinrai Broken Beyond Dreams. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I definitely enjoyed recording it even though the uh, reading murdered my throat. <laughs> it was totally worth it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me.
A rank. You might have made a bunch of mistakes, but for the most part, you knew the correct answer right away. Ooh, a bunch of mistakes. Sounds like me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.